hello, it's time for Chinwag again. This is episode 32 and my name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my four chickens. So you're more than welcome. Please draw up a chair and join me for a Chinwag. I'm going to show you some of my crafting this week. I'm going to show you some of my crafting from years gone by and I'm going to read a poem that my dear friend wrote and I'm going to show you my new journal and tell you about scrapbooking and oh, I've forgotten what they call it now I call it scrapbooking and uh, of course I've done it in the past and I'm going to do it in the future but I'll talk about that later what else do I want to talk about well I've got it in my journal <laughs> I've had moleskin, I think it's called moleskin before. I've always kept them, I've got several. Um, but they're, they're not bulleted, they're just notes. And I keep them because they're interesting to browse through, but I'm starting to do little dots and then write something against it. Now, I have got a list here of what to do. Thoughts for chinwag. Oh yes. No, I'm not going to do that, but I'll explain it. Right, I'll do that. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's start. And, oh, just to say that it's a beautiful day here in the southeast of England. I mean, we, have, we haven't been using the conservatory because it's been a bit chilly. And why would you heat it when we've got, you know, plenty of places to sit in there? But uh, it's lovely. I'm looking out, we've got a collared dove out there and he's collecting long twigs to go and make his nest. I was going to get it for the little film, but I probably won't bother. My eyes are always darting here, there and everywhere. What can I put up? What can I do? Anyway, I've forgotten where I was now. Where was I? I can't remember, so I'll just carry on. Oh, journal. Yeah. I sort of hit a... It was a jolly good time to start mine because I hit a brick wall. And I think you were part of that brick wall too. What it was was that I'm on episode 32 and people were saying, oh, have I done this and have I done that? And what have we done? Oh, I can't remember. I never kept notes on what I did. I just sat and did them and posted them up. And what I did was I cut off the little bit of film and put it in a playlist for me. And then last week I did a bit of cooking thought I'll put that playlist on it's jolly nice there's not me gabbling it's just pleasant music nice little birds and little walks and all the things that my chinwag is but I then thought well perhaps other people might like access to that so I made it public but then the videos that were in that playlist weren't public they weren't private they're what we call unlisted and I thought, well, people go on that playlist if they should want to by coming onto my homepage, but they won't be able to access the videos. I know now they will. So you can put unlisted things in there, squirrel. You can put unlisted things in there and just make the playlist public. But by pressing each one of those videos as public, it means it gets released. And so everybody's feed that was, you know, subscribed got all these chin wags all of a sudden. But that's where all the feed, that's what happened. You know, it's just me not, not understanding things. Another lesson learned. The only way to learn lessons is to experience them. But I'm sorry that you were on the end of it. Anyway, of course, it made me think, well, what is on chin wag? That's what I did on Chinwag episode one, episode two, and I spent a good part of last week writing it down. And then I've, I have earmarked what I need to do. I said I would show Pete's log cabin quilt. He chose the fabric and the whole quilt is just log cabin. And so I've earmarked it with blue because I didn't do that. Oh, I want to talk to you about this. This is earmarked in blue. So anything that I need to go back on or I mentioned and haven't finished, I've got marked in blue. But each episode now is marked up so I can look and see. 
I'm also doing a page for my walks, uh, which I think is a good thing. I mean, it's only a tick box, you know, it's only a tick box. But uh, when I've been out for walks this month, I've ticked the box. What else have I got? I've got an index that will tell me. A uh, wish list, hoping I will find time to do it. Page 97. Okay. And there it is. I've got a little wish list of things. So one of which is my songbird mittens. I've, I've had that on my wish list. Of course, now I've got it written there. It's more likely to get done. So this is on my wish list. Songbird mittens. By Erica Hooser. I really want to do those. I think they're so pretty. And I've wanted to do those for quite a while. But now it's, I call, you know, it's listed on my page 97. So that I want to do. Um, this I want to do. I sent off for it. And of course, Alan Dart has been on um, Fruity Knitting this month. And this is an Alan Dart pattern that he put in a women's magazine and that you can't get anymore. But I did manage to get this for quite a price on Etsy because I loved Brambley Head I, Hedge. I did quite a lot of embroideries. I've given them away. I haven't got them myself. I think my girls have got them. And um, here it is. It's Poppy and Baby Rose and Buttercup. And she's not small, and that put me off. Um, and you need quite a few colours, obviously. Oh, it's 13 inches tall. But because I saw Alan Dart on Fruity Knitting, yeah. Do you know that proverb, iron sharpens iron? And I think that's what we do, isn't it? When we, when we look at each other's um, uh, vlogs and then you know seeing Alan Dar it made me think now get that pattern out and do it iron sharpens iron and when I'm, I it's like when Pete does his knives you know he's got a long steel and he goes like that it's, it is an art I can't do it he doesn't go clunk 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 you know we don't bash each other up when we encourage each other but that iron just sharpens iron and it gives us ideas it gives us enthusiasm, it makes us think, oh yeah, I'll do that. So it's a nice proverb, I think. Um, that's it. So that's my journal. Thank you for the encouragement, iron sharpening iron. And what else do I want to show you? Oh, well, here's another bit of iron sharpening iron. Anne from Spa Knits. She showed me, well, she showed me, she showed everybody that she was... Um, you know what's naming talking to she showed me a lovely bag she made Do you remember the little mouse one I sent off for that too and I made a project bag out of the mice I love it autumn colors and of course I watched her bag and I watched her little mouse and I remembered there was a piece of fabric there Elmhurst now I'm gonna say it's below show more I explain it every week but of course my friend Kay told me, not on my device it's not. On my device it doesn't say see more, show more or anything. Just there is a little arrow. And you press the arrow and then all the notes come up that I've put there. Because she said to me, Pen, can you please tell me the exact mess, uh, recipe for the chocolate cake last week? I said, Kay, the notes are show more. But she can't do show more. It doesn't say show more. What am I talking about? Just this little arrow. Click and then it all comes up. So for those that you don't know and haven't found it yet, that's what it is. So I'd remembered that Elmhurst fabric sold this little mousy one. Of course I succumbed the iron sharpened iron. Maybe a bit too sharp. And I've just sent off for a fat quarter. I think it's six pound, but I did send off some ribbon too. So another project pack is going to be coming up and I'll show you. It's so cute. It's lovely the way it's 
it's done like a watercolour. Is that the right way up? Yes. The little mice are so cute. I know it sews up beautifully. And the colours are lovely. So the other colours were sort of autumn-y. And these colours are very spring and summer-like. Well, they're summer-like, aren't they? And I succumbed and bought the ribbon too. Comes all nicely in a little bow. But um, there they are on the ribbon. It's a woven ribbon. So it's very good quality. And I think the two will look beautiful in a project bag. So thank you, Anne, once again. Sparnet's lovely chatty vlog of all her makes. So, oh, and thank you, Anita. Gaga Knits. She mentioned sharing the love and my my figures have skyrocketed so I'm really grateful. Thank you very much and I've watched you since the beginning as I have Sparnets, as I have several people. Oh yes, as I have you Sarah. I've watched your first episode sitting there on the settee and I know that you're going through one by one. You'll see, it's like watching a child grow going back to episode one, isn't it? Yeah. My other friend, Heather, she writes the funny little poems, gorgeous ones, about the mole, about chinwag, about the carpet shop, if you've come across those. And she said to me, Pen, would you show me how to make a lemon meringue pie? So I've weighed all the ingredients out in the kitchen. And when I finish this, I'm going to go in and show you how I make it. I've been making it since, well, since history began. The same recipe, every time it comes out well, I wonder if it will this time, but never mind, I'll do it and we'll have a chat. So that will be coming up after this. As will a fascinating fact, which is about, I found it interesting, it doesn't link with science this week, but I just found it so interesting about little calf and little baby sheep and little baby goats about their tummies. So yeah, that's the fascinating fact. Pete does a chat about his omelettes <laughs> because, yeah, he was a chef in the um, Trocadero, which was a superb restaurant in London. It closed down in 1965. It was 1962, he tells me. He was there straight from college. And when he used to, he doesn't do it so much on the vlog, but when he usually tells people about it, you know, he stands up and he shouts in French, da, 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 because that's what you did. You shouted to all the people because all these ingredients then came to his station and he put them together and made the um, omelette of the house. And uh, yeah, it was quite something. He didn't get so animated. He gets a bit shy in front of the camera unless he's in his dressing gown coming through the door. But, um, yeah, it, it's his omelettes. Well, he says to me every day, what would you like for dinner? And I could just say an omelette, please. They're so light and they're so fluffy. I'll get him to show you how to do it. So it's it's uh, spaghetti bolognese and it's the bolognese ragu and the omelette. That's in the pipeline for him. So what else? Well, I've been making this week. What have I been crafting? Well, here again, we go back in history. I showed my granddaughter Lois, would you like me to knit something for baby Tommy? And she went through quite a lot of my books. I've got a lot of books, you can imagine. And she chose this one. I'll show you. J it is. Oh dear, I'm flicking the pages, aren't I? Sorry. J, there we go. Now, what I didn't notice, when I was sitting last night knitting the first sleeve, I didn't, I thought, what, what's this pattern saying? But can you see, this sleeve goes up there, and then it goes along there. It's rather a nice pattern. So the sleeve goes there. I'll show you. Um, I'm using the Women's Institute, soft and cuddly. I'm exclusive to Hobbycraft. You get three balls for the price of two. And Shade 704, 70402, and the colour is cream. It's good value for money. Um, 
to get one free and I, I'm glad I got it. So here's the front. Very pretty. But, and very soft, I mean, ideal for babies, just to pop in the machine. And here's the sleeve. I thought, what on earth is this about? But of course, this is going to go up and over. That'll join like for the sleeve on the shoulder. And then this will go up and over on the shoulder. Isn't that a nice? Never knitted anything quite like that before. So yeah, so I've done the front and back and the sleeve. Just got the next sleeve to do. And then it's got a little roll neck. So I'm pleased with that and I hope she will be too. I'm sure she will. He's growing very well. It, well, he's, he's doing well. She's popping around to see me today. She does a test. She's feeling well. So we take the chance because otherwise we don't see many. Well, we don't. Anyway, enough of that. I'm fed up with all of that. So I keep that in my chin work bag. And what I've decided is I like the square bags. I think the little ones... Um, you know, the little mousy one I made that you go like that. They're lovely for socks and things like that, but I often knit a lot bigger. And so I like this bag. And so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use that mousy one to, to make one of these. So that's what I've been up to this week. That's the pattern. So that goes in there. And then I wanted to show you a quilt that I made. Well, I can tell you when I made it, 22 years ago, because my grandson, Harry, is 22 in August. And I started making him a quilt when I heard he was on the way. And um, my daughter said to me, she's got rather a lot of quilts I've given her, over this chair, over that chair, over the settee. And um, she said, Mum, would you look after this one for me? And I know where it is. I was happy to do that, but I thought I'd show you. So I'm going to show you up close, and then I'll stand up and show you. Now, this is called a plique. And I got the designs from a colouring book, a children's colouring book. So what you do is you get the picture on the colouring book, and you trace out the various parts. So what the bit I'm going to show you here is a sailing boat. So I traced round one sail, I traced round the other sail, I traced round the little mast and then the parts of the boat. You don't want it too complicated because it, it looks complicated. And um, I think this was my first effort at applique, I'm sure it was. Then you get freezer paper that you wrap your cheese in, in... Um, in the fridge, jolly good stuff it is too. And you you then make a piece and iron over, cut out your pieces a quarter of an inch bigger and then iron it over the freezer paper. So you've got a beautiful crisp edge. That freezer paper, it's sticky, but it doesn't stick. So you put it shiny side up, iron that over and it sticks. You've got a lovely creased edge then. The, the freezer paper comes out as easy as wink. And then you've got a nice edged piece of fabric. And then you pin it on your piece of square back, if that's what you're doing. That's what I did here. And uh, sew it round with small stitches. And as we know, Wabba Sabi, if your stitches aren't that small, it really doesn't matter because it's the doing of it that's, in, you know, the joy. Um, and then I quilted it. So I'll show you. This is what I've been talking about. Now, I have to just come round like that. So here's the bit I traced from the colouring book. And then I put the freezer paper in shiny side up and ironed it round. And then I took my piece that's got a lovely edge and I sewed it to my backing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pieces.
This one's got seven pieces, but I did it exactly the same. And I chose a handful of fabrics, and so I mimicked. So have I got... Yes, so on the boat I've got that there, and then I've got it here. On the wing I've got that there, and then I've got it there. So it's sort of then, it goes around the quilt. Shall I stand up and show you? So the bottom line is that a little dog, a teddy, and there's the boat. The next line Yeah, it's rather nice, isn't it? Talking about scrapbooking, you see, this is a scrapbook I did in the 70s, as you know. Put some poems my friend sent me. My, You know, just bits and bobs in here. But I wanted to read you this poem because I thought it was rather lovely. And it's called First Sunset. And it's written by my friend Sonia, as I say, in the 70s. I wish I could see the sunrise or set at the end of the day. And what's the horizon like, Daddy? Is it over the wall, far away? Why don't the stars at night twinkle? My nursery rhyme book says they should. And why is the sky at night amber? I'd paint it all black if I could. The best place to witness the sunset is over the sea, son. I said, from the deck of a ship or a jetty, away from this city so dead. I haven't got money for cruises, but this thing I'll promise to you, I'll show you these wonders this day, son. The ferry to West Cows will do. The train drew out of the station, we rattled our way to the sea, we hand in hand boarded the ferry, Let's go up on deck, Dad, said he. Together we stood and we saw it. The sun sinking slowly so grand. The gold and the crimson hued cloud mass. The sea so smooth holding its hand. A crescendo of colour uplifted our hearts in our breasts as we saw the aura now waxing, now waning the afterglow fading yet more. Together we stood and we wondered, what beauty, what timelessness here. Oh, blessed the man who sees this sight, this gift every day of the year. I thought it was a lovely poem. Thank you very much. And of course, looking in my scrapbook, well, Boots scrapbook. <laughs> but I've sent off for a new one. I've got a big hamper upstairs of all paraphernalia, all memorabilia, and I'm going to start putting it into another scrapbook. So I'll take you along with me as I do that. I think it might be quite interesting. So it might be another bit. So I'm going to go make myself a drink and I'm going to show you the fascinating fact. So I'll come on after that. See you in a minute. If you have ever watched a sheep, a goat or a cow giving birth, you have probably marvelled at how quickly the newborn gets to its feet and finds its way to the udder for milk. All mammals feed their young on milk, but in the case of young ruminants, such as lambs, kids and calves, there is another unseen marvel. Cows have a four-chambered stomach, for the multiple processes needed to digest grass and forage. But newborns feed only on milk, which does not need all those processes for digestion. 
So when the newborn suckles, a special bypass tunnel opens to allow the milk to go directly to the last chamber. If milk were to find its way into the first chamber, called the rumen, the calf would suffer because the rumen is where hard-to-digest food is broken down by bacterial fermentation. Fermenting milk produces gas that newborns cannot eliminate. However, when young ruminants drink milk, whether from a nipple or a bucket, a reflex action snaps shut the entryway to the rumen. Remarkably, something different happens when a newborn drinks water. It needs plenty of water in its rumen so that bacteria and microbes can multiply, ready for when the youngster begins to live on forage. Although milk goes directly to the stomach's final chamber, plain water enters the rumen. The calf's amazing bypass is for milk only. Well, that's fascinating, isn't it? I would never have known that if I hadn't researched it. So thank you for sharing that with me. So it's time now for a little bit about Pete's omelettes. So that's going to go up next and I hope you enjoy it. We were sitting in our dining room because it was too chilly to come in here. It was a chilly old day, but today's beautiful. So here, I, know, I haven't even got a cardi on. So it's very like that at the minute, the weather in Britain. Beautiful. The sun makes all the difference, as you can see. So I'll see you then. Bye. No, I'm not saying goodbye. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> so Pete said to me, what do you want for lunch? And I said, I'll have one of your omelettes. So I thought, well, why not have a little chat about his omelettes and then I'll uh, film him while he takes it. How are you off yeah, for omelettes, a little chat about my omelettes. Yeah. Where have you got all this experience of making omelettes? Trocadero restaurant. Where's that? What's that? Piccadilly Circus. Well, it's uh, Great Women's Street. Okay. And Shaftesbury Avenue, right on the corner, but it's to throw people to know Piccadilly Circus. Piccadilly Circus. And when you left college, catering college, yeah. I know you applied to three establishments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Dorchester, Waldorf Astoria, and the Trocadero. And the Trocadero. Yeah. You got the Trocadero and you were pleased because. Well, I, I, I chose the Trocadero yeah. the end because, you know, it's a, it was a restaurant, not a hotel. Right. So no breakfast. No breakfast. No. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, yeah, so it and okay. it wasn't just an ordinary bre uh, restaurant, was it? Well, it was it was a top one in those days. Top one. You know. Yeah, uh, I'll put the... Uh, we're not going to have an argument, because we usually do what year it was, but I'll put it up here so you'll know 62. what year. 62. Oh, oh. 1962. Okay, 1962. So oh. here he is in the Trocadero, having uh, worked on the Isle of Wight for a little while. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and now left college. Yeah. And so the Trocadero was a well-renowned, it was a renowned yeah. restaurant, and particularly for the Debs, well, but, the debutants. Yeah, the, the, the season, they, the, the, when there were the banquets were going on, and uh, the Debs were presented to the Queen. Right. Was it Debs? Yeah, was it? A debutant. Yeah, debutant. Yeah. So yeah. they, you said they were in the upstairs. Yeah, because yeah. it was about... Four stories high, I think. Four, right. Three or four. Okay. But I never went up there, so I didn't really know, because I used to go in the side door, which was in Great Britain. So how many covers a night mostly oh. did you do? But you... When the banquets were on, yes. you, you know, they could, could go get up to yeah. 800. Apparently there's a lot of people. No, there was an orchestra there, Orchestra. Yeah. So Almost. it was a really gorgeous Not a full place. orchestra. No, but, it... but lovely. What an experience. Yeah. And... Here you are, you've been asked for an omelette, so what did you have to do? Of course, everybody spoke French then, didn't they, for the cooking? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So it's all we all French. spoke different. I mean, think the Trocadero, you know, it was great when I first went there because it taught me how to get on with people. Okay. I, I was put on the veg section, which you were at the beginning, you know, when you joined a, a thing like that for the first time, they put you on the veg. And he was a Greek man, a little Greek fella, Mickey. And he was he was really great to work with. He was funny, and yeah, we and uh, the, one of the one of the duties of the of the veg section was to, to do the omelets. 
and uh, and but the other thing was soup. It wasn't just vegetables, you know, soups, omelets, farinaceous stuff as well, which where the omelets come in. And the omelet was uh, well, it it was a three egg omelet for a start, and it mixed in with mushroom and um, parsley? parsley, yeah, yeah. mushroom and parsley, mushrooms and parsley, yeah. And then you, there was a, a chicken, chopped chicken co-head with su sauce supreme that went in the middle and then you folded it up and then there was a Mornay sauce that went over the top but it was put on a silver dish and the Mornay sauce on the top and then that was flashed under the uh, grill, the salamander grill and uh, to rip ground off and then you put three asparagus tips on top and that finished it off and then it went out to so it was quite a sounds thing. divine. And, but the thing is, you didn't have all that pro all that on the on the veg section. You had to shout to the other sections to get to get the chopped chicken from the larder, the Mornay sauce from the poisson air, and the uh, the um, what's the other one? Um, the oh crumbs, it's gone. What is it? What's that? Like? Supreme sauce. The supreme yeah. sauce from the saucier. Yeah. Right. And you shouted it out in French. Yeah. And uh, then they'd run it down to you. And then you make the omelet and you mix it all up and you, you know, and uh, there it was a sauce. And you'd uh, put what? it under the salamander. Yeah, I said it? that. Oh, yeah. you said that? With the asparagus Sorry, on it. And then the asparagus some... on the top. Yeah. So that, that was quite a. So it was quite a loud, uh, noisy kitchen, wasn't it? Yeah, Everybody and, shouting out and in French. And it was a very, funny enough, you would never think so, it was a very popular dish. <laughs> so I was Why like, wouldn't I think so? Well, I'm because nowadays it. it's a bit, oh, you know, two sauces, chicken, yes, three eggs. Yes, it's for one. Yes. It's not for half a dozen. You have to get a little bit like this now. I've got you. Yeah. yeah. Super. Yeah. And then who would bring it to you? Well, there's commies. You know, commie chefs. There was five or six sections. And you're all in whites with the big oh, tall yeah, hats? Oh, yeah. And yeah. Then there, was, there was first commies, second commies, and then a hell. Uh, yeah. You know, so. and, and Beaufort was, uh, he won awards. and That's a he, head chef. Yeah, he used to come out yeah. and just have a little taste and see if everything was right. That's right. But you, you got on with his son, well, didn't you? Well, he had you? two sons. One son oh, right. went, used to go up, so he was in charge of the banquets in the summer. Oh, in, okay. In the season. And he's, I can't remember his name, the chap I liked. He was yeah. a younger boy. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he told me to wear hobnail boots. <laughs> so, you wore hobnail boots? Yeah, it's because, you know... Kitchen and kitchen dropping things. things and, yeah. yeah. And, um, and also, <laughs> he'd skid along, you said. He'd come down with the chopped chicken because he worked in the larder. Yeah. And he'd come along with it and he'd skid for the... He'd do like a thing, <laughs> whoa, with a, and put it on the... And then yeah. he'd shoot back. And, and, and then thirsty work cooking, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It was a, a thirsty work because it was a massive kitchen. Yeah. Uh, it was about like, 40, 50, whatever, sh uh, 40 yeah. chefs. And, but with all the other people that worked there. And um, so there was no central, uh, no uh, extract or anything. Oh, well, there was a bit of extract, but it wasn't very really good. Uh, but the, uh, so we used to get beer or orange juice. Yeah. You could pick the nerves. The beer used to come round in a, a, a milk churn and they used to shout, beer up, and you'd grab the first thing that came. And because being on the, on the veg and uh, having the soup tureens, that would grab a soup tureen and then you'd pour it in. And how much did you take? Two pints lunchtime, three pints in the evening. <laughs> But it wasn't a strong beer. It was beer. a weak beer. It was a weak beer. But and nevertheless... <laughs> but I used to you get it. Chefs. It was lovely and cold when you got it. You'd have a couple of sips. You'd put it on the, we'd put it on the top shelf because there were shelves running along. Yeah. Um, the other side of the ovens, not over the ovens, because we were the last bit in the kitchen. Yeah. And you'd put it up there, and within 10 minutes it would be lukewarm because... It was so hot, but really? you just drink it down and pull it out. And yeah, you were stick thin then, weren't you? I was. I, I wish was. I had a picture of you all in your whites. I was about 10 stone. Yeah, 10 stone. well, you were 10 10 when I married yeah. you. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I'd been out. I mean, that's pretty slim for a six I foot was in one the army guy. Then. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right, well, we're going to wrap it up now. Yeah. And I'm going to go and have my omelette. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. What memories he's got. You can imagine. And uh, he said that it, working there taught him how to get on with people. That's interesting, isn't it? Because everybody was all different nationalities. And that was new from him, from straight from college. And he loved it. He got to know people who, well, as he said, they all spoke different languages. But in the kitchen, it was French. So uh, interesting. And they're lovely memories for him. I'm glad he shared them with us. But as I say, I'll get him to make an omelette and I'll film it next time he does it. So I want to do TA now and it's the last bit of how we can spend our time and this is about intimacy and this is different to games or the other past timing you know when we pass times I remember this you remember that and we can go on train track and when it's games it doesn't feel right there's that oh there's that you know I'm playing a game here it doesn't it's unresolved, there's nothing ha I can't, no, it, that's how it feels with games I talked about last week. Intimacy is different, it comes from adult. We might access our child first of all to see how we feel, but then it comes out in adult and we explain how we feel. It might be that I'm feeling really tetchy or angry, but I'm explaining that. So just say, I might say to Pete, you know, Oh, I'm feeling really angry because there you are still in your dressing gown. I've got all this to do with chin wag. I've got, the, 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 I've got that to do. And I'm feeling rather cross. That's intimacy. Because I'm sharing my genuine feelings. And it can get somewhere. Because he might say, oh, I'm sorry, can I help you? Or he might say, well, I'm feeling a bit miffed too that you've got all this to do and we can't go out for a walk and you're not free. It's intimacy. Why? Because we're sharing exactly how we're feeling from adult. We've probably accessed child to find out before. How am I feeling? Happy? Scared? Angry? Sad? Well, in this case, I was feeling a bit angry. And so was he. But we expressed it. And we got somewhere because we resolved it. So, of course, when we use the word intimacy, we might refer to, you know, sexual intimacy. Um, and that might get you somewhere. But it also might not because people can play a lot of games when, um, you know, they're intimate in that way. This is something different. This is intimacy because we are sharing how we're truly, authentically feeling. We're able to express that from adult to who we're talking to and that encourages them. If they can access their child and say how they're feeling in adult, then we can resolve it. Okay, I'll do chin wag, you do what you're doing and then we'll go out for a nice walk afterwards. We've got somewhere. So sharing how we're feeling is a good thing, but be able to do that from adult, not in child. Oh, you're getting really on my nerves. You know, la, 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 la. That's not, no. No, this is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling a bit stressed because, oh, you know, I'm feeling really happy today. What should we do? Intimacy, sharing those innermost thoughts in an adult way. Well, it's come to the end this week of uh, Penelope's Chinwag. I think I've shared with you everything I wanted to. Shall I just check my journal? What page is it? Oh, what page is it? Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, yes. I've explained the short films. I'm sorry you've got a whole load of them in your inbox. But I've explained that I'm going to sort that out. Show Pete's log cabin quilt. I'm going to do that another time. It's a big quilt and I need to take some photos of it and explain to you. So that's for a future episode, but it's there. Oh, Yes, I'm so sorry. I read you my book a couple of episodes ago, my edited one, but I'd forgotten completely I'd read you my unedited one. So I do apologise for those that are catching up. You're going to hear it twice. Yeah. Well, you could let me know which one you prefer, the one with the anecdotes in or the one that's been edited. Yeah, let me know. That would be handy. Um. Oh, I wanted to mention Kim in Fleece and Harmony. 
she said something that resonated with me. Being a monogamous crafter before and now no, I have several on the go. She said projects can be complicated, fun or easy and we can pick up whichever one suits us at the time. I liked that. Projects can be complicated, fun or easy. That's Kim from Fleece and Harmony. I don't know if you watch her. I rather like it. Her weather, she's completely snowed in. I think it's Canada. I've had a request for Lemrang Pie. I'm going to go off and do that now. I've showed you Harry's quilt. Oh, I've showed you the new fabric. Oh no, I'm going to put up here. I sent, I'm going to put a picture of my grandson. He said I could. Um, Nicholas the little one that with confidence and balance and he sent me a little gif I hope I can upload that here of his feet moving in the socks that fitted him well so now I'm going to put up the little film breakfast time I go down and let the chickens out and it's beautiful morning I come back have a cup of tea and watch the birds through the kitchen window took a little film and that's what I put same old same old but that is my life at the moment we're not going on holiday. We're not doing anything exciting. So it's just a little film from this week. So thank you for sharing. So I'll see you next week, all being well. And you take care. And yeah, look after yourselves. And thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really do. Bye. I'm going to attempt to show you how I make my lemon rang pie. So welcome into my kitchen again. I've weighed all the ingredients out. I like to do that. So what I've got here is I've got my, she says, Delia says, eight inches at the top and six inches at the bottom, sloping sides. So that's what I use. I've got my flour weighed out. Um, in it goes. And I've got half fat and lard. In it goes. Lard is very good for you. I did a whole thing. I looked it all up because they used to use lard, you know, in the old days a lot more. But um, it's very good for you. Low in cholesterol, it's not like fat, uh, which you tend to think lard isn't. But it gives a nice short pastry. So I've got it there. Everything's supposed to be cold for pastry, but do you know what? It's all right. It'll be all right. I weighed this out before. I started doing chin wag and then what I do is I just as you can see I just you know you don't go at it hammer and tongs just rub it together I mean you know little fingers can do it too now when I got married I'd only ever made fairy cakes <laughs> so it's a bit oh my goodness I've got to cook a dinner. How do I do it? And Pete's mum, she was a gorgeous cook. Uh, as was my mum, but his, his, she was a lovely, you know, what you'd call a plain cook. And it, all her plain food was delicious. And I said to her, oh mum, will you show me how to make pastry? And uh, oh, she said, she never weighed anything. You scurf it in a bowl and you scurf this in a bowl and no, no measurements. So as she scurfed, I measured. And she told me how to make pastry. And um, my pastry's always been lovely. So I hope it is today. Lois is coming around with baby, so I'm making this to give her something to eat. Right, I think that's all as good as, you know, crumbs. It's crumbs. Don't want to handle pastry too much. Now what I usually do is take the bowl over to the sink and slurp in a bit of water. But you'll want to see how much I put in. i just got to do that because of flour. So, so I usually go flip under the sink, under the, under the tap, not the sink. So I put some in a, in a jug here just so I can go slurp. And I've got a knife. I don't touch it now. I do it with a knife. So I'm just going to go slurp. Slurp. That's, it, that was... Slurp. It was just a little slurp. Can you see? You don't want to keep adding because that will make it go tough. But you just, it's just that amount to make it into a ball. 
keep going. I mean, you can do it in the mixer, of course you can. But I find this so easy. I could just do with a little bit more. I mean, we're talking a little bit more. It's just a couple of slurps. And now that's coming together. You can see that. Let me put this down. That's better for you, sorry. Right, so can you see that coming together now? All the bits from around that side. There it is. Huh? So here it is, I've hardly touched it, except for when I did the crumbs. And now I've got one of these waxed. Ellie, my granddaughter-in-law and, and uh, Nicholas bought me that. It's a wax thing, you can wash it round. And I'm gonna pop that in the fridge. So in the bowl, I've got, hang on, I'll just tell you, three level tablespoons of corn flour, and 50 grams of sugar. Yeah, and I'm just going to put a little bit of the, that's half a pint, I don't know what all these mils are, 275 mil. So I've just put that in there and I'm going to mix it together. Right, then what do I do? Right, measure half a pint of cold water into a jug and spoon the corn flour and sugar into a bowl. Add enough of the measured water to mix the corn flour into a smooth paste, then pour the rest of the water along with the grated lemon into a small saucepan. Bring this up to the boil, then pour it onto the corn flour paste and mix till smooth. Okay, so here's the rest of the water going in. And here's the lemon, two lemons, microplaned. Don't get the pith, just get the, you know, don't go too deep and get all that white. You don't want that, you just want the lemon. Oh dear, it's a bit awkward this. Right, so I'm going to be stirring that round. Transfer the mixture back, bring this up to the boil, pour it onto the corn flour. Okay. And then you pour it back into the saucepan. So I just pour this straight into the saucepan. I don't pour that in here and then pour that in there. I just, when that's been boiling for a minute, to get that flavour of the lemon zest, then I pour this on. That works all right. I've got to get all the lumps out now. Right, bring that up to the boil and then I'll pour that on. What do I do next? Simmer for one minute and then remove the pan and beat in the egg yolks, lemon juice and finally the butter. Okay, it's very simple isn't it? That's not hard. Okay, let me push you back there, it might be a bit better. Okay, so I've got the lemon juice, the butter. Now I'm using, my eggs aren't that massive. It says large eggs, so I've used three. I've got three, so you know, you need the white for the meringue, so you need a nice bit from the meringue. I'm now adding the Yes, pour that in. You don't want to lose any of it, do you? Right. Okay. What does it say? Give it a stir. I've done it. How many times have I made a lemon and pie? People that know me. Millions. I still have to read it. Simmer gently for one minute to prevent it catching. Stirring all the time. And then stir in all of this, that's it, that's it, all the time. Don't let it go lumpy. Let that cook out a minute, because otherwise you'll get a cornflour taste. Can you see what that's like? That's like that. Right? Oh, she's going to leave Bobby with us. Oh, she, where's she going then? Shopping and cleaning the flat. Oh. How long are you going to have her for? A couple of hours. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Right, so, so now I'm, to it, yeah? I don't know. So now I'm going to beat in the egg yolks, lemon juice, and finally the butter. Plop. I need a glass saucepan so you can see. There it is. Oh, if I do that, is that better? Look. Egg yolks. Lemon juice. Steady. And then I'm putting in the butter. Now, she doesn't say to do this, but to be fair, I've always done it. As you can see, there's no bits left really, but it really does make a lovely smooth and glossy lemon. Um, so yeah, I give it a good old sieve, smash it through, get every last bit, and um, that's uh, that's what I do anyway. Whites in the bowl, and I'm just going to whisk them up, and I'm going to do it quick time for you because it makes a row. Oh, that's the oven. That took one minute ten. <laughs> there they are. And I'm going to do it very slowly and add the sugar. So I've just got my pastry out of the fridge. And uh, it's been in there about ten minutes. I don't want to handle it too much. I gently do it. I gently do it. I don't go whoomph. I gently do it. There we go, I think that will do. I don't want to manhandle it. And then I just go like that and pop it over the thing. Give me a helping hand. Oops, who's that? Somebody on the phone. Yeah, she's just doing her COVID test and she's going to pop round with Babby. Right, here we are. Can you see this? Uh, any excess I just put on the edge because we want to eat it. We don't want to cut it off. That was easy, wasn't it? Is that okay? Just like that. Oops. And then what I do is I've got a... I've got a little... You know, a bit of what's name? Oh, I've got one in here as well that I've used before. Pop that on, and then I put my beans on, my beads on. Stop it all rising. So I'm going to pop that in the oven. But I've got some post here. Pete said you've got post. Oh, let's see what it is. I wanted a, a pull. You know, for the project bags I've been making. You need pulls, otherwise the zips go a bit like that. So I sent to So Re Me, oh here it is, that's it, and it's just a little pull. Oh thank you so much. It's just a little pull. It's a little envelope, I liked it. Then it go on my zips for pulling backwards and forwards. Then I've got something from Chapel View Crafts. There's our card. Oh, it's a stitch marker. Used to keep count on a piece of knitting or mark repeat patterns. And there's four of them, but I thought I could use them as zip pulls too. A little Battenberg one. Piece of cake. Oh. How exquisite! And a couple of biscuits, jammy dodger. So that may go on, I thought they, they could go on the zip pulls. Parakeets. Some washi tape, blue, and a nice micron pen so I can do my journaling. So there we are, that's my post. I'm just gonna get the 
flan up, not the flan, the pastry case out the oven. Won't be a minute. Right, so I'm going to put the lemon in. Oh, let's get that out of the way. And spoon them around on top. Then into the oven it goes, and I'll show you what it's like when I, I'll cut a piece and we'll, well, Pete will tell me what's wrong with it. I don't mind that at all, because it's usually right. However, if you want to make a bigger one, then just double up the, the ingredients. That's what I do, and it works, <coughs> works a treat. So there we are, that's going in. You see, it's nice and deep. You get these, they're so reasonable. That's what you want, a deep, you want six inches across the bottom and eight inches across the top. I'll show you when it's finished. So I'm going to pop it in, get it a little bit brown, and then I turn it down. Taste test, lemon oh, yeah. rind, because oh, you have yeah. to open your mouth so wide, and who wants to see that on film? All I can say is that, oh dear. It's oh uh, so very hard that oh is delicious as baby is too. And we I don't know which one's the best. So there we are. Pete's been eating these for so many years. You don't need to hear Pete's view, and so uh, that that that'll do. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>